Hey guys, thanks so much for coming to check out my channel. This design is so pretty, super easy, and just perfect if you really want to showcase that vinyl. Let's jump right in and get started. This tumbler is fresh out of the box, and we're going to go ahead and start by removing the little tumbler butt so we can glitter it. I have a flat screwdriver. I'm going to thunk it two times, and that will pop right out. I really like using Fast Cure Epoxy for this step. So I have that mixed up. I'm adding Goddess from Peachy Olive Glitter. I'm going to give it a gentle stir to make sure that it's incorporated well without adding any extra bubbles. And I'm going to go ahead and fill in the bottom of my tumbler with this. I'm going to do both little rings, that inside part and the outside. I always like doing this step either right at the beginning or before I finish my design, before I do that final coat. That way, if anything was to happen, um, it won't spill onto the nice, perfect little finished product. It's easy enough to still clean up. So go ahead and get that around. We're going to smush this down with our little stir to make sure that it's in all the crevices. Hit it with the little heat gun to even it out. I like to take a dry baby wipe and go around these edges to help clean it up so it doesn't set kind of messy. There's rubbing alcohol on there. I'm going to hit it with a torch to pop any bubbles and let that sit and cure. We're going to start designing this tumbler by giving ourselves a straight line for where the vinyl needs to go. I went ahead and designed my decal in design space so I know that it's just under two inches. I have a piece of clear contact paper here and I went ahead and cut that to two and a half inches and I'm using that just as a place marker for where that decal needs to go so I know where to put my glitter. Next up we're going to get this sticky sheet that I got from Mr. Nola's Glitter and I want to trim away all of the white edges. I want to make sure I have a really straight line on everything. So once I do have that trimmed down I'm going to wrap this around my tumbler and I have it not completely at the bottom. That way I can see where that clear contact paper is and I can mark my paper down to size and know where I have to cut it. After that is trimmed down, we're going to lay it back on our tumbler and we're going to line up the top to see how short we need to trim this so it will fit. So I have that there. I'm going to grab a pencil and just kind of mark it and then run it through my paper trimmer again to get rid of that piece. I'm going to place that right up against the end of that little clear contact paper and make sure it wraps around and I have good spacing. Once I'm happy with that, I'm going to apply this vinyl with the hinge method. Peel back a piece of the vinyl, trim it off, and then line it up to your tumbler. Since this is a straight line, it's going to be super easy to apply. We're just going to lay it straight on there. And then once I have that smushed down, I like to lay my tumbler down on the side. I'm going to push away the back of the paper and I'm going to gently roll it and push it from the inside out to get it to lay flat without any bubbles. I removed my clear contact paper that I accidentally cut out the video and then we're going to go ahead and trim off the edges. The cup edging tool is from Kelbell Customs and I will have a link and code in the description of all the supplies I'm using and where you can find them. So go ahead and get the ends trimmed off, remove that extra vinyl, and then we're going to start taping it so we can put down our paint and glitter. I'm using electrical tape to get these edges marked off. I'm going to put this right over that edge of vinyl. That way we can put down the paint and glitter. And I'm sorry for my head being in the way. I really love using electrical tape because since it has a little bit of give to it, you can really kind of contour areas and make sure you're getting right on that line. It's pretty forgiving. The other really great thing about it is that since it does have a little stretch, whenever you put down any epoxy or glitter, you can easily remove it without it ripping. I mean, it takes a lot to rip this stuff. So it's really easy to be able to lay down in nice clean areas and then pull up without messing up any of your design. Also, I've used a ton of different brands of vinyl and so far this electrical tape has not lifted up any of the design. So that's also great too. So once we get that laid down, we're going to tuck in the top, but the bottom we're going to trim that away. Since I am going to put some spray paint on here, I need to spray paint that stainless part on the side of the tumbler. And then I also want to spray paint the tumbler butt black. To protect the rest of the vinyl, I have a piece of saran wrap right here and I'm going to lay it a little on the black and then I'm going to use this painter's tape to secure it on that edge. We're going to pull that tight and tuck it around the top because we do need that to overlap and we don't need it too snug on the bottom because that's going to be trimmed away. Flip it over, pull that tight, lay it right there and this is where you can see a little easier how I lay it right along that block and then I secure it down with this right here. We're going to go ahead and flip this over and trim away those parts because like I said, we do need black spray paint right there. And if I would have spray painted this ahead of time, we could have skipped all these steps, but I didn't. So now we have electrical tape and we're going to make sure that the saran wrap is secured to the bottom of the tumbler, um, kind of where that edge of the vinyl meets it. That way spray paint doesn't get on that bottom part. It doesn't come up under that parchment paper. So you can see right here how I have the saran wrap covering the vinyl. It's tucked in right there and it's going to be easy to remove. Let's go ahead and get this on our stick and we're going to take it outside to get some spray paint on it. You don't need to do a lot of spray paint here, um, just a light coat. You definitely don't want it drippy, but if you are using a glitter that's a little lighter, make sure you get good coverage. Spray paint the bottom as well, and we're going to let that dry. 
Once that dried all the way, I'm going to go ahead and go on with my epoxy. And I like doing all of my glitter epoxy method. So I'm spreading on right here my Fast Cure epoxy. We're going to get a nice thin coat. I don't want this to be something where my glitter really, you know, kind of soaks through it. I just want enough to adhere it. For this, you're not using a lot at all. I mean, 2 mLs at the very most, I would think. It's just enough to adhere it. So go ahead and get a nice smooth coat of epoxy here. If you need to use your heat gun, you can. It'll be a little easier to help spread that around. Next, we're going to drop our black glitter. And this one is called First Night from Crate by Firefly. And this stuff is amazing. It doesn't have a sparkle, but I absolutely love that you can see kind of the shapes of the glitter through the epoxy. Um, I wanted this to not be a completely girly, sparkly tumbler. So the fact that it doesn't have you know, all of that shine is so perfect for what I needed. I really, really like this one. I think it's going to easily become a favorite of mine. Once you're confident that your glitter is all the way on there and even up to your tape edges, go ahead and start knocking off that extra glitter. Um, I like to use kind of just a shaker, something heavy to knock it off and everything will just tap right off. We're then going to take a piece of parchment paper and lay that on top of the glitter and smush it all down. That way we won't have to fight with any epoxy and rough spots. I'm going to start by removing that bottom piece first just because it's over all that other tape and it'll be easier to do this way. So once I get that removed, I'm going to go ahead and start taking this top layer off the sides. The layer that I'm taking off right now is just that blue painter's tape and the saran wrap. Don't try to chase your tumbler around in circles. Go ahead and turn it off and remove it. It makes it a lot easier. Now for this part, take your tape and pull it towards the glitter and down gently. If we were to pull it in the opposite direction, then we have a chance of lifting up that vinyl. But since we went ahead and pulled it from where the vinyl was already laying and towards the glitter, it's not gonna mess up that vinyl. Just make sure you keep it close to your tumbler and go slow so it doesn't lift away. This vinyl is forgiving, so if it does, just lay it back down. We're then gonna take parchment paper and we're gonna go along the edges of that black glitter to make sure that's all down. Once that cured completely, I went ahead with a paintbrush, and this is just a dry brush, and I went ahead and dusted off all of the extra glitter. I'm really paying attention to that glitter, the vinyl area, to make sure that it doesn't have any glitter on it. And then when I get to the black glitter part, I'll gently go over it with the paintbrush just to loosen any glitter and have that fall off. I did spray it with clear spray paint before I put the layer of epoxy on, and this again is Fast Cure Epoxy. I'm going to start by just putting this epoxy on the vinyl. I wait for the glitter for last, um, just in case anything's loose. I know that I wiped it off all the way, I know that I sprayed it, but every once in a while things just don't go as planned and, and you still get a stray glitter. After that's down, I do take a healthy little bit and I put it over the glitter. Whenever I'm putting epoxy over glitter, Glitter, I want to make sure that my hand, like my finger, doesn't feel the texture of the glitter. You're kind of just gliding over the epoxy. Usually when I do that, I end up with a really um, smooth finish and I don't have a ton of sanding that has to happen because of glitter. And if you're using a black glitter or any color glitter, be really careful that you don't sand off the color. Um, so just you'd want to do another layer over that. If this was bumpy, do another layer before you try to sand anything. So we went ahead and got that on. I'm hitting with a torch to pop any bubbles. Alrighty, now on to the bottom of the tumbler. That has cured. I have my epoxy mixed up. I mixed in my black glitter and we're gonna go ahead and pour this in here. I start by getting it pretty much full and then I take my popsicle stick and I really help smooth it out and I run it all along the inside of that little area to make sure that there's no bubbles trapped in there. It's really easy to get those bubbles out once they come to the top. It's a little tougher to do with a fast setting epoxy. Um, so just make sure you kind of mix gently and you're a little more cautious with it. After you have that spread out, torch to pop any bubbles. Alrighty, on to decals. So I went ahead and I have that parchment paper that I had earlier. I took the back of it and I put it on a sticky mat so I can go ahead and build everything onto this sticky mat. There's two reasons why I'm doing this. Um, the first is that since it's a small space that this needs to go in, you know, I only have a little room on each side for this to fit. And I don't want to build it on the tumbler and then have it kind of be off just a little bit. So for me, visually, it's easier to build it on the mat and then layer it on the tumbler. Now for the bottom part, I would normally just put this on the tumbler like that and then do the top layers while it's on the tumbler. I would prefer to do it that way because I find that whenever I build it on the mat and then transfer it, I end up with bubbles that I don't usually have before. 
The reason why I'm not doing it for this tumbler is that um, for that word vibes, it's black. And whenever you put that black over black uh, epoxy and glitter, you can't see it. You can't see that vinyl at all. It's really hard to tell where it is. Um, and it would have just gotten lost and been impossible. The vinyl that I'm using is super forgiving though. So I know that I can easily layer it on here and not have any issues. So once I have that whole thing together, we're gonna go ahead and remove this from the sticky mat. I like turning it upside down and pull it off. I find it's easier to release. And then I'm going to loosen it from that sheet. I'm gonna set it on my tumbler about where I think it needs to go. And we're gonna do this hinge method. So for that, I'm gonna go ahead and cut away the piece of that um, clear contact paper, that back little paper part, to give that little sticky piece something to stick to on the tumbler, and that would be easier to line it up. So like I said, roughly put it in place. I have a ruler, I'm lining it up to make sure that it's really straight on the top, and I just need that top part of the game day to be straight, and everything else will really just fall into place. So once I'm happy with the placement, I'm gonna go ahead and smush the rest of it on the tumbler. I'm gonna lay down the bigger side that has more room to adhere to. I'm going to take the top part of this off and I'm going to pull this away gently, release the back part of the paper, and then we're going to go ahead and lay this right onto the tumbler. To do that, I always like to start from the center of my decal to make sure that goes in first. And then I work the inside of my words and I push from the inside of my letters and I kind of just trace the wording, making sure that the bubbles go from the center of the wording out to the ends. Once that's down, I have my little squeegee and I make sure that everything is really well on there. We're now gonna pull away our clear contact paper or whatever you use for transfer tape and um, and you're done with that part. Uh, this transfer tape, it's still good to use, so I will actually just put the backing on that and keep it. I'm gonna use the same vinyl that I use for the wording to give myself some accent stripes. Um, I don't have the file to run this through the Cricut, so I just do my cutting machine. And like I said before, I always like to do a little offset even with lines, so this is black nail strip tape, and you can get a lot of these off Amazon for a great price. So go ahead and lay that flat on there. Just make sure that you're not getting any creases in it. Once you have that down, take your little craft knife, and I like to cut right along that line. I go like just a, maybe not even a hair shy of where the end of that epoxy is. That way it does adhere nicely. And then I go right over that with the little accent color. In, in this case, it's green or I guess more like a lime green, yellow, whatever color this is. So get that piece down on there, take your craft knife again, go ahead and trim that off, and then we will flip this over and do it to the other side, and maybe you'll be able to see a little better on this angle how that green meets up. Um, it's just really pretty. A few tips that I'll give you um, for whenever you're doing these lines, especially with nail strip tape, don't pull it super tight. And I, I have to figure out how to word this view, but if you do pull that um, that little nail strip tape really, really tight, whenever you go to do epoxy or as it sits there for a minute, it will um, not quite shrink up, but from it being pulled tight, it'll kind of like relax a little and then lift on those areas and it won't quite stick to the tumbler and then you'll have a little gap. If you do have an issue with any type of pinstripes, what you can do is once you get that on, go ahead and hold it down with a silicone tool and hit it with UV resin and the light to get it to stay in place. That way it's um, not something you have to fight with when it comes to epoxy. So once that's done, we're gonna go ahead and get our layer of epoxy on here. This is gonna be preparing it for the final steps of epoxy. This that I'm putting on right now is Fast Cure Epoxy. It will be the second to last coat of epoxy that I do on this tumbler. So I'm gonna go ahead and get a nice thin coat on here, but I wanna make sure everything is covered really well. We don't have any bubbles. So once that's smoothed out, we're gonna hit it with a torch to pop any bubbles. And then as always, since I don't bring my epoxy over the bottom, I do take my dry baby wipe with rubbing alcohol and I go right along that bottom edge right there to make sure that epoxy is pushed back and up against um, just below where that vinyl and everything is so it's sealed in really nice. I also do the top rim of my tumbler to make sure that um, the epoxy will have a nice seal around that top as well. And then that's it for this step. This will dry completely, and then I will do another layer of epoxy, and that one will be with Artist Cure Epoxy. It's just, um, it gives a lot better yellowing protection over time. Super durable, glossy, just perfect. And this is the end result. Guys, it came out so pretty. Thanks for watching. I hope you love this tutorial, and I'll see you soon.